Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to the Netherlands for the first time in what seems like quite a little while and we're going to have a look at a brewery who I have never tried anything from before but they have garnered quite a bit of a reputation over the last little while, not least thanks to my friends in the Dutch Beer Collective. So for this review then, we are going to go to a little place called Heilu, just to the south of Alkmaar in Nord Holland and we're having a look at my first ever beer from Brauerei de Morselotel. So this one is their Intergalactic Bounty Hunter which comes in at 10% ABV and this is an Imperial Stout with coconut and coffee added to it. So it should be a very very interesting beer. If you've watched my channel before you will know that I'm a huge fan of coffee stouts mainly thanks to Dugas Bregery in Gothenburg here in Sweden who have been doing some very, very nice examples of the style over the last little while. But um, this is a brewery who I've seen uh, on a couple of occasions. I've seen their beers fairly regularly over in Copenhagen, and I have seen them a few times uh, back home in Scotland, mainly in Glasgow and Edinburgh, actually. So I would probably say that it's... I would say that it's fair to say that these guys are one of the more recognisable Dutch craft breweries at the moment. And, you know, my experiences with Dutch craft beer have always been very po positive. I mean, I first encountered it back in 2014 when I went to Leiden to study a little bit of astrochemistry at Leiden University over the summer. And I brought some Dutch beers back with me to review and, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit of a shame. Dutch craft beer, I think, isn't recognised so much because you've got Belgium and Germany right next to it. But uh, if you get the chance to try some Dutch beers, I highly recommend that you do. But since this is a Dutch beer review as well, I'm going to give a huge shout out to my friends at the Dutch Beer Collective. This is Thomas Hoogendam, who on YouTube is Thomas Opent. There's Remy van den Doop, who is... Uh, Beer Geek Holland and then we also have Herben Caspers as well who is Dutch Beer Geek. All three of these guys have featured on my live streams recently and there's also Simon uh, Beer Romaniac as well who isn't involved at the Dutch Beer Collective but he's also got some very very nice reviews of his own on YouTube as well so make sure you check out all of these guys there's a really thriving craft beer scene in the Netherlands at the moment and hopefully in September Covid-19 situation permitting I can get down and uh, meet the guys in the Dutch Beer Collective at Thomas's house in the north of the Netherlands. We'll just need to see how that plays out, but hopefully you can see these guys on my channel a little bit more and I'll see about filming a kind of meet the blogger segment with each of them as well. So look, you can look forward to that at some point later in the year and I'm sure after that as well you will get a good number of more Dutch uh, beer reviews on the channel as well. That's something I really, really want to set up. So um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this beer then. Make sure you check out the links to all of these guys in the video video description below and uh, do follow them on Instagram and things like that as well. So yeah, let's see how we get on with the Intergalactic Bounty Hunter from the Moors Lutel as well then. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Browride the Moors Lutel. Very first time I'm trying one of their beers of course. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Dutch beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to whenever I get the opportunity. Not as often as I would like, so hopefully we can fix that in the future. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Browride de Moors Lutel then, on to my brewery notes. So as I've already mentioned to you, Browride de Moors Lutel are based in a little place called Hailu, just to the south of Alkmaar, which is Nord Holland, and I think it looks as if it's about an hour and a half or so to the north of Amsterdam. So the brewery was founded back in 2016 by the four Zomerdijk brothers. This is Pim, Tom, Rob and Max. And apparently they developed a love of brewing from their parents Siak and Marguerite who had a brewery called Vlinden Beer. So they had started brewing in their kitchen and then they moved into a brewery space back in 2012 and developed a few recipes over the coming years. Um, but Browride de Morris Lutel are based in the former GGZ kitchens and this space became vacant after the clients began cooking for themselves. This was apparently quite 
quite a large scale um, kitchen operation. Um, but it's now home to the brewery. There's a cheese factory in there as well. Also a carpenter's and an electrician's as of 2017. And I think it probably has expanded a little bit beyond that as well. But in April of 2017, the two breweries were merged together to become one company. So you have the Moors Lotel also producing the Vrienden beer brands as well. At that point they added two new 2000 litre brew kettles and they've also acquired a number of different barrels for their barrel ageing programme over the years as well. But this brewery tend to focus on higher ABV beers and until 2018 the brewery had, had produced almost exclusively Imperial Stouts. I think looking at the untapped list there was one Imperial Porter in there and then over 2019 they started to add some IPAs and sour beers as well. There's been a couple of barley wines and uh, there was one smoked beer as well. We'd love to try the smoked beer. If you've watched the channel before you will know that I'm a huge fan of the Rauch beers because that's where my whole love of craft beer began. But as of May 2020 when I'm filming this review for you they've produced around 80 different types of beers and there's also 12 beers under the Vrienden beer brand as well which are um, there's a couple of the kind of traditional sort of Belgian style beers in there, there's a few American things and there's quite a few German style beers as well actually. Um, but the name uh, Brauerei de Moors Lutel, it literally translates into English as the Wrench Brewery and this is taken from the working background of the brother's father and I think one of the brothers also um, as well was like a mechanical engineer or a mechanic or something like this. So the name of this brewery is literally The Wrench and you can see that on the brewery symbol as well. So um, yeah, like I said, this is a brewery who have made a big reputation for themselves in terms of high alcohol. Uh, Imperial Stouts and uh, I know that uh, Herben Kaspars from um, from Dutch Beer Geek, he is a massive fan of this brewery from what I gather. Uh, Thomas Hugendam from Thomas Open, he went as far as calling Herbin a Demors Lutel slut. Apparently he just loves anything that comes out of this beer. So if you want to see more Demors Lutel uh, reviews then I guess you should check out Herbin's uh, channel as well. So um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about Brauerei Demors Lutel just now. These guys, as I say, are very, very well respected. Dutch uh, Dutch craft beer brewery and uh, one that I do hope that I can review more from in the near future. I think the only uh, the, the most recent beer I saw on the shelf from these guys was an Imperial Brown Ale or something like that so hopefully I can try that at some point too. I do enjoy a good Imperial Brown so uh, yeah but this one I thought would be a very very good beer to introduce the brewery uh, on the channel. As well so hopefully as I say this turns out to be a very nice one but if you want to learn more about Brauerei de Moors Lutel um, check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and of course you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done so um, yeah let's get on with this one then so I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one before we open it up there you can see it is pretty damn nice I have to say have to compliment them on their artwork. You can see the sort of Wild West theme that's there, the Intergalactic Bounty Hunter. Apparently this is a sort of reimagined version of their Bounty Hunter Imperial Stout which was first released in um, 2017. They're calling it a new and improved version and there you can see of course the, the Moors Lutel artwork in this one. So they call them, themselves the Moors Lutel Beer Engineers and there you can see the wrenches. So say um, Moors Lutel in Dutch means uh, wrench basically. So yeah, nice uh, artwork on this one. So without further ado, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. As I say, an Imperial Stout with coconut and coffee coming in at 10% ABV. And these guys are from Halu near Alkmaar in the Netherlands, Nord Holland. <laughs> Yeah, so 440 milliliter can this one. This is another beer that I picked up at glassbanken.sa. So, uh, yeah, I think this one was released, if I remember rightly, I think this beer was released around January or December, January 2020 or December 2019. So, um, yeah, it has been out for a little while and uh, it is supposed to be a very, very good one, this. I, I know that my friend Rob uh, over at Hop Scene has reviewed this, so if you want a second opinion, make sure you check out his review. I've not watched it right enough because I wanted this to be a kind of, you know, authentic first taste, if you like. So maybe after 
Uh, probably after I've fil finished uh, filming this one, I will actually watch Rob's review and just see what he thinks of it as well. So um, yeah, as you can see and as you would expect from an Imperial Stout, this one is you know it's pretty much black as night to be honest with you. Um, if I shine the light through this, it's got a teeny tiny little bit of a kind of Coca-Cola coloured edge to it, but it's literally just around the rim of the glass, so there's not a lot of light coming through this one. So uh, to be honest with you, it is opaque as hell this beer. Um, yeah, black as night, dark ebony kind of rosewood colour, no other real way to describe this. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and there's a few little ones just going up towards um, at the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall it does look very, very nice and to be honest, not unsurprising when you consider what style of beer it is. The only thing is, as I say, the head, it came out with a very, very thin foamy layer, a kind of medium tan coloured head but that's really just faded away to be pretty much absolutely nothing. When it's a 10% beer, you know, the higher the alcohol, the, the more it kind of struggles to uh, to retain its head. And, uh, you know, usually wheat is a, um, is a good thing for helping a beer retain its head. So obviously this beer does not have very much wheat in it at all, but that's not uncommon for an Imperial Stout. But uh, yeah, nothing surprising in terms of the appearance. Let's have a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on. Well, I'll tell you something, you can smell a hell of a lot of coconut out of this one. Um, this is a really sweet, leaning Imperial Stout. I don't know if you could quite term this as a pastry stout, uh, to be honest with you. Um, and I don't know if you can really class a number of the Demours Lutel beers as pastry stouts. I know from what uh, Thomas was telling me, these guys um, do lean towards the kind of lactosey part of the spectrum. But um, yeah, it's not madly. So from from what I kind of knew of this brewery already, this isn't madly surprising. So yeah, first impressions of this beer. You know, you've got a hell of a lot of coconut with it. It really does have a sort of vanilla lactosey type quality to it. Quite a bit of sweet, milky kind of chocolate as well, to be honest. Yeah, it almost comes across as like a big, massive, like, milk stout, and like an imperial milk stout or something like that. Um, the coffee is actually very hard to detect in this one. And coffee beans, I've told you before, I'm a massive fan of, uh, of coffee stouts, mainly thanks to Dugas Bruggeri in Gothenburg in Sweden because they've done quite a few with lots of different um, varieties of coffee beans. As I've told you before, coffee beans, um, I don't even drink coffee, I don't like drinking coffee, but you know, coffee beans are one of the most interesting adjuncts that you can add into beers. It's all about the height at which the coffee bean is grown above sea level. They call this mazel, meters above sea level. And the higher you go, apparently, the more kind of fruity and uh, aromatic and things your coffee bean becomes. But really, in this uh, beer, the coffee, there's not a lot of it in the aroma. You can smell a sort of very, very smooth, kind of roasty uh, backbone, and you, you can tell that it's coffee. Um, but, you know, it's a very, very smooth, light earthiness to it. It almost comes across as quite sweet because of everything else that's going on in the beer. Um, in fairness, I wouldn't say this is the most complex aroma that I've come across from an Imperial Stout. There's definitely a few kind of nutty and woody undertones to it, but I would say that it's pretty straight up kind of, you know, milk chocolate, like a sort of 30-40% cocoa level chocolate. Definitely a, a hint of almost vanilla quality to it. It doesn't have vanilla in it, but I think the lactose kind of gives it that impression. You've got some really nice um, kind of coconutty notes out of it, which is, is obvious the coconut kind of dominates the uh, the aroma of this beer. And um, yeah, I think that's that's kind of about it, to be honest with you, from the, the kind of malty adjuncty side of things. Um, I don't really get much in the way of brown sugar. There's a bit of a sweet caramel to it, kind of in the middle of the nose. But, um, yeah, mainly it's kind of vanilla, lactose milky chocolate, coconut, a few woody undertones. Um, and yeah, other than that, not too much to report. But I guess the flavour will be a little bit more kind of complex than that as well, actually. Um, in terms of the hoppy side of things, there is a wee touch of earthiness to this one. Um, there's a little bit of grassiness to the beer as well, which is kind of to be expected. Um, in terms of the hops, I guess, you know, 
go and buy the aroma maybe they've used summit the other option of course um, if it's not an american hop would be like bramling's cross or something like that which is very popular in doppelbox um, but of course when it's an imperial stout the focus is on the malts rather than the hops um, on that fruity side of things i mean it's very it's got a light sort of figginess to it you do get a small hint of like a slightly sharper raisiny quality out of the beer but yeah there's a few kind of blackberry black currant notes which could be well you met that's a very popular hop to add into these sort of things as well um but yeah it could be that the two hops that it could be i think i said uh, bramling's cross was used in doppelbox so i've made a mistake there if i did say that um bramling's cross is very popular in english barley wines northern brewer is the one that's quite often used in um, in Doppelbox in Germany. So those are the two hops that it could be. But to be quite honest with you, I don't find it phenolic enough to be. Um, I don't find it phenolic enough to be. Um, to be Bramling's Cross. So I think it's more likely from the grassiness and the floral notes you get out of this beer. I think it is more likely that it's a German hop. Um, it could also be something that I've never heard of before, um, and it could, uh, it, you know, it, it could, the Summit is quite a popular one, as I say, to use in these things from America. Well, you may as well is very popular, because you are getting a little bit of that black currenty blackberry um, note out of this one, and that's what you would get from Will You Met. But as I say, um, Northern Brewer, which is very popular in Doppelbox, might be uh, an option for this one, because you do get, as I say, a little bit of a sharper raisiny note, um, but mainly a kind of juicy, kind of figgy quality to the beer. And there's also just a wee bit of a kind of black currenty, blackberry sort of thing as well. The more that you smell this beer, the more fruity I think it gets, to be honest with you. And it does start to lean more towards the kind of sharper side of things as well. So yeah, there is a wee bit more of a kind of darker chocolate note coming out of this one. The more you smell of it, like a little bit of a, you know, a 70, 60, 70-ish percent cocoa. Um, but yeah, mainly this is a very sweet leaning imperial stout in terms of its aroma. But I like how it goes together. I'm just surprised that the coffee isn't a little bit more prominent. It's just a very kind of smooth, um, slightly earthy, roasty coffee in there. But we'll see how it turns out in the flavour because coffee can give you a lot of diversity um, to your beer. So yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on. This one is the Intergalactic Bounty Hunter, a 10% imperial stout with coconut and coffee from uh, Brauerei de Morge Lutel, my first beer from these guys from Halu, just to the south of Alkmaar in North Holland in the Netherlands. Let's get stuck into this one. Slange, skull, prost. Yeah, I have to say that is pretty damn nice. Um, I like how that goes together. What I'll say, first impressions is, in the beginning, very, very sweet stout, but the coffee definitely comes out more in the aftertaste. Um, I was about, I have to admit, I was a wee bit worried because of the aroma and how dominant the coconut was, but it really works out very nicely. Um, the aftertaste of this one's very interesting. At the front of the palate, it's actually very, very sweet. But then towards the back of the palate, it really dries out and just gives you more of the roasty coffee. So this one's got a really interesting kind of balance going on with it. But, you know, if this is, if this beer is anything to go by what the other beers are like, then I can see why this brewery is getting, you know, good plaudits because this is absolutely solid. It really is pretty solid. I mean, um, the beer, the brewery to compare this to um, in Scandinavia is either going to be Omnipoil or it's going to be Amundsen. Um, because you know these guys are doing all these deserty, uh, these two breweries are doing all the kind of deserty kind of pastry stouts and things like that. So um, yeah, I guess Lervig actually have a few of these too. So um, yeah, this is uh, this is on definitely on par with um, the the Lervigs, uh, the Amundsens, and the uh, and the Omnipoils that I've had already. So uh, yeah, I can see why the Dutch guys were uh, were talking about this uh, about this brewery actually it's nice to finally get around to trying this one I have to say yeah I do like that 
gets a big thumbs up from me this one. As I say, these guys are specialists when it comes to um, high alcohol beers. See, there's a few barley wines in there. Um, I've seen an Imperial Brown, I'm sure. And there's a few IPAs and things like that too. So I need to try one of the IPAs, one of the barley wines, I think. And if I can, the brown ale, because that's quite a rare style to come across. Um, I'd love to see these guys have a go at a Scotch ale if they specialise in the um, the higher alcohol things. That would be an awesome little project for them. I'd love to see them have a go at that. But um, yeah, this th this really is very, very nice. I like how balanced this beer is. Let's try and break down the flavour of this one then. So straight away with this beer, um, the middle of your palate, the malty side of things, is really very, very smooth. And I mean, um, that's going to be down to sort of, I, mean, I think it's going by the sort of flavour that the beer has and the sort of feel it has. I think that's probably down to a mix of oatmeal or straight up oats and uh, a bit of lactose. I think there's a lot of that going on in this one. So yeah, it's, you've got a very, very kind of slick and smooth mouthfeel in the centre of your palate here. So yeah, I really like how this... Um, I really like how this one, um, this goes together. It's a very, very smooth beer. With that, within that sort of lactosey um, kind of oatmeal-y base that the beer has, um, you do, if you go to the front corners of the palate then move back a little bit, you get a few kind of woody undertones to the beer. If you go to the very back of the palate, that sort of back third of your tongue, you do get some of the kind of roasty black malty qualities there. But the black malt that's in this beer is really being, it's really being smoothened out by the lactose and, and oatmeal that's in there. Does it actually say on the can that it's got this in it? Uh, no, it just says water, malty barley, hops and coconut, coffee and yeast. But yeah, there's quite, to be honest with you, there's quite obviously some lactose and some oatmeal in this. I'm 100% sure of that. You can't get that level of smoothness without it, to be honest with you. Because if, if there wasn't, the beer would feel a little bit drier than it is. And this is ridiculously smooth. Um, and of course, you know, to be honest, Thomas and... Uh, Thomas has, has told me that this is the kind of things that they do with their beer. But I really, as I say, I really like this. The more you go into the aftertaste, the more you start to get the kind of coffee coming out of this beer as well. So in the back third of the tongue, you can you get a lot of these nice kind of coffee notes. It's got a very smooth, earthy kind of feel to it. But at the same time, the further you go into the aftertaste, you can feel a little bit of a slightly aromatic and citrusy vibe coming off the coffee as well. And it just starts to kind of push its way forward on the palate too. So it's really interesting how that, the coffee flavours really evolve further into uh, into the aftertaste with this one. But yeah, in the middle of your palate, in the very centre of your palate, you will get a wee bit of an impression of a kind of brown sugary note, like a kind of sweet caramel. Um, but really in the middle of your palate, the further you go into the aftertaste, very quickly you'll feel those dark, high cocoa chocolatey flavours um, developing out of this one. And they gradually get darker and darker and more bitter the further that you go into the, the beer as well. So it's a sort of 80-ish, 70, 80, probably higher than that actually, maybe an 80, 90-ish percent cocoa chocolate that you get out of the middle of your beer. You can really feel the, uh, the the coffee notes just pushing their way forward on this one. This beer definitely gets darker and more bitter the further that you go into um, into the aftertaste. So I really like that about it. Um, the coconut, in the beginning, as I say, when you take the beer in and the sort of liquids on your tongue, you really get the sweetness out of it. And the coconut, um, the sort of sweetness from the coconut really goes together quite nicely in this one. Yeah, when you take this in, as I say, um, if you go, you've got the front third of your tongue and just behind that, that's where you get the kind of coconutty flavours kind of lingering there. It's almost, um, as you reach that border between the kind of middle third of your tongue and the front third of your tongue, you really get this very dark, kind of almost like brownie type quality out of the beer and that's where the kind of coconut flavours sort of aggregate together. So say, there's a wee bit of brown sugar there, but then you've got a nice dark um, kind of bitter dark chocolate in this one, but you can feel the coffee just kind of seeping forward underneath that as well. So it's really interesting how just all of these flavours mix together. There is a few kind of nutty undertones to this one, and they kind of play in with the coconut, and you've got a few woody things to it as well. So this is a beer 
it really starts off very sweet as I say and then the further you go into the aftertaste it gets more roasty and toasty and from the coffee and the coffee's got a nice little bit of a slightly citrusy um, aromatic type quality to it. Uh, on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate you do have a nice little bit of, uh, of a darker earthiness coming out of this one. Um, See, I think if I've got a feeling it might be like Summit that's been used in here. There's just something telling me it might be Summit that's been used in this beer, or maybe uh, Will You Met, because it does have a little bit of the distinctive earthiness that you can get from uh, from Will You Met. But as you come kind of further forward along the sides of the palate there, the earthiness does spread forward a little bit. It almost becomes a little touch herbal. But as you reach the kind of front corners of the palate, there is a little touch of a floral aromaticity then around the very front curve of the tongue. It's just a little bit lighter and more grassy. Then behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy, fruity esters push their way out of the beer. And uh, the front third of the tongue is where all the kind of fruity sort of layers of this beer are sitting. So let's look at that. So yeah, when you take this beer in, it does have a little bit of a kind of juicy, plummy, pruney type quality to it. And then as you kind of go further into it, you start to get a kind of juicy, kind of figgy-ish quality. You can really feel the dryness. The dryness almost, the sort of dry coffee roasty notes, and really spread, they really start to spread almost to the front of the palate as well, the more that you drink of this beer. But yeah, you get a juicy, plummy, pruney quality in the beginning, then you start to get the figgy notes, and then the further you go into the aftertaste, just almost right on the front tip of your tongue, that's where you get a little bit of a kind of black currenty, blackberry-ish quality out of the beer. It's quite hard to pick out what hop I think this is, but I really have a feeling that it's either, not, that it's either Northern Brewer, German hop, or... It's like Summit and Will You Met. It could be something like that. Um, but the way the fruity notes in this come out are very, very nice, I have to say. Uh, you know, they could, I don't think there's a wee bit of Cascade in this. I don't think so. Um, yeah, it's difficult to guess the hops when it comes to the dark beers. Because, you know, for example, Simcoe can behave very interestingly if you fire that into uh, to a black IP or something. give you these really uh, crazy red fruit notes so you know who knows it could even be Simcoe that's in this one because there's a few things in there that just remind me of a couple of black IPAs I've had that have used Simcoe but uh, yeah the fruity side of this beer is I say quite juicy plummy and pruney when you first take it in you get more of a figgy note comes out of it the further you go into the aftertaste and on the very kind of front edge of the tongue you've got a bit of a kind of blackberry-ish blackcurranty type quality in there as well so overall a very very interesting beer this one in terms of its flavour profile, it leans towards the sweet end of the spectrum in the beginning, but it really gets drier and more roasty the further you go into the aftertaste. So let's look at the mouthfeel of this one then, and we'll round off this review. It's really hard to describe this beer as anything other than a, um, other than you know, very uh, kind of full-bodied. The carbonation is really smooth in this one. Um, it's really just a very kind of thick. Uh, somewhere between oily and creamy, there's a lot of lactosey, oatmeal-y type quality to this one as well. Um, so yeah, um, the mouthfeel of this is is really kind of is really very thick and and creamy and oily and things like that. In terms of the IBUs of this beer, I wouldn't be surprised if this one's sitting somewhere around the kind of sixty-ish mark because the coffee really gives it a good bit of bitterness and you can feel some earthiness from the hops as well and the, the, the bitterness of this beer just kind of creeps forward on the tongue um, in terms of the uh, yeah so the bitterness is coming both from the kind of malts and the adjuncts and a little bit from the hops and um, but it really starts off sweet in the beginning the malt base has a good degree of sweetness to it as well but really it leans more towards that roasty bitter and dry kind of character you've got some lovely um, juicy oily fruits coming out of this one as well and uh, overall this is just a really really interesting beer. I didn't quite expect it to be um, so I didn't expect it to be so kind of dependent on the transition starting off very sweet but then ending very very dry and bitter but um, I have to say I think the Moors Lutel have done a really nice job of this and it certainly makes me curious to try a few of their other stouts as well. I need to try one or two other IPAs and I also need to try uh, a couple of the, bar uh, or at least one of the barley wines. I enjoy a good barley wine, and seeing what these guys can do with an imperial stout, 
I think uh, a barley wine from these guys could be very, very interesting. So, uh, yeah, what you'll find with this one is a very balanced imperial stout, very roasty in the aftertaste with, with the nice kind of coffee notes and quite aromatic coffee at that, and then some nice kind of sweetness uh, in the beginning, but also quite a nice... Uh, an interesting transition in the fruity characters of the beer as well. So um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This one is the Intergalactic Bounty Hunter, a 10% Imperial Stout with uh, coconut and coffee from the Morris Lutel in uh, just near Alkmaar in North Holland in the Netherlands. A really interesting stout this one and I think a very nice introduction to Browride the Morris Lutel as well. So if you get the chance to try some of their beers, I recommend that you do and do make sure you check out my friends at the Dutch Beer Collective. That's Thomas Open, Beer Geek Holland, uh, Dutch beer kit and of course we've got Beeromaniac as well that you can check out too. So um, yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Brower de Morse as well. Hopefully you can see some more Dutch beer reviews at some point in the near future. Like I say, you can look forward to some interviews and stuff with the, the Dutch Beer Collective in September. And uh, I really hope that you guys have uh, have enjoyed this one. I look forward to trying more Dutch beers and more from Brouwer de Morse Lutel in hopefully the near future. Thank you again for watching. Check out my social media. Check out the Dutch guys as well. And I will catch you guys very soon. This one was the Intergalactic uh, Bounty Hunter at 10% EBV from Brouwer de Morse Lutel, Alkmaar, North Holland, Netherlands. Slanje, Skull, Prost.